The select statement can also be used to get rid of duplicates, that is to pull in distinct values from your query. So let's do an example here to show you how that would work. So if I say select um, last name and title from employees, you can see that I come back with four people that are all account managers. Now let's just select the, the title from employees. So if I say select title from employees, you can see that I get back all four rows again with account manager. But what happens if I just want to get a list of all the, the titles of my employees? Well, what I can do is say select distinct title. from employees. What this will do is remove all the duplicate uh, um, rows that would be returned. And you can see that only one row now is returned, account manager. I also want to show you how you can correct your mistakes and how to find them. Because sometimes uh, the computer isn't too helpful in giving you hints on where you have an issue with your command. So I'm going to bring back one of my samples again. And we'll use that to uh, go through an exercise here. So first of all, I'm just going to paste in the one that works. So now it works. Uh, now I'm going to go in and, and put some errors in this just so we have something to uh, work on here. And as, as this uh, does its... Uh, as we work through the errors, I want, I'll show you uh, some issues with that. I'm going to put a lot of errors in. One more in here. And one in the select. All right. So this SQL statement's just not meant to, uh, to run. Let's we'll see what happens. So you'll see it says error near select, syntax error. So first of all, syntax means grammar. So this is, means the statement's not built correctly. And if you see where it says S-E-L-C-T, the big hint here is like, all right, I want to look exactly in my statement for S-E-L-C-T and then try to figure out what's wrong with it. Well, since we're working with select statements, it's pretty easy to see that I spelt this wrong. So I need an E in there. So I added the E. Let's try it again. Now it says there's a syntax here, error near the foam statement. If I look through my statement here, I see foam at the end. So let's fix that. I'm going to hit enter. Now it comes back and says that there's no such table order details. Before we go further, I want to just point out that the, what, the thing that the um, computer did is it made sure that the framework of the statement was correct that I had a select and then a from. So it checked the main scaffolding. Now it's kind of digging in deeper to the next level to get a check to make sure my tables are named correctly and that my columns are named correctly. So this table is not named correctly. It's spelt wrong. Let's fix it. I'm going to add an A to it. So now it's ordered details and run it. And it comes back and says no such column unit price. All right. We know how to fix that right here, unit price. The other thing you're going to find is that the columns, as we work through the columns, it's going to start with the first column and then kind of work along the columns as it finds issues. And it says there's no such column, swanty. So we know that's quantity. Whoops, I just made an error there. We don't want to add that in. Let's change this to quantity and hit enter. And it came back. Now, I actually wanted it to uh, have an error with, with the ampersand, but it looks like it's it's actually thinks the ampersand wants to do something with it. So we'll learn about that later. But obviously, the total is not what we want. So to debug this a little further, we have to kind of look at our unit price and quantity total area to see if there's an issue. And what we find out there is that, indeed, we weren't doing multiplication. We we're doing something else. So let's just change this to a multiplication and see what happens. And now we're back to normal. 0.25 times 60 is 15. Checks out. 
looks like 1.39 times 100 is 139. That's easy. Just move the decimal place over twice. So the math's good. I'm feeling good. I hope you're feeling good because you just completed your first lesson in SQL. And uh, I'm going to have some exercises for you. They're going to be written in the, um, the blog. And then the next video will actually have me going to the answers. All right.